So we have our third and final um, piece today mm. to look at and discuss. Oh, no introduction. Ah, oh, oh, lovely. Okay. Yes. No introduction. Yes, because wow. there's a picture of him in the, um, the National Gallery, National yes. Portrait Gallery. Yes, yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. The High Priest. Yeah. And actually in the V&A there, there is this as well, yes. isn't there? Yeah. Yes. I've seen that. Yes, I've seen this. Mm. Very interesting character. Mm. Mm. So do you want to sit and say what you were looking at? Um, I think, yeah, so this is an illustration of two men that were brought over as slaves, weren't they? Mm. And um, through their journey, they were eventually freed as mm -hmm. well. Um, but it's interesting that they're together. I've seen them separately, but not together. I can't remember the names, um, but he's interesting because he's Muslim mm. as well. Mm -hmm. And he brought that, you know, made sure that he would prominently show that in the images, which I think is interesting. Mm. But it's also quite problematic because, you know, in both their pasts, they were also involved in the merchant slavery um, situation. Mm -hmm. So their families were making money from slavery as well. Mm, I didn't know that. Mm. Mm. So it says here, so it's Job, son of Solomon, Solomon Diallo, is it? Diallo yes. high priest of Bonda in the country of Futa, Africa. And it says, William answer. Something was that say? Sis Araku, son of John Bannister. Yes, Sis Araku, son of John. Yeah. So, okay, so is he is he mixed race? If he's son of John, who's John Bannister? Because that's a very um, very English name. Um, and it says Coranty. I can I can't read the rest because. Current, it didn't mean Coromanti because Coromanti is, is Ghana, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. yes. And sometimes you'd find it spelled all kinds of ways. So I'm, I'm wondering too, who is John Bannister? Why does um, do they have to mention his um, who his father is? Well, they, he well, was they, they he was born well. into slavery though, wasn't he? So mm. he would have a Western name, but he was. Kidnapped, I'm yes. sure. Yeah, that was his story, yes. yes. Mm. And he's Ethiopian, isn't he? I'm sure he was. Is it Ethiopian? Um, I'm not sure. Mm. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, you're going to give us the juice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting response, isn't it? So when, mm. I, when we um, put the words that we discussed at the beginning, you know, African women and hair, these are the pieces that came up. I think oh. they may have come up mainly because of the word African, mm -hmm. um, so, but I really was intrigued by the, this particular piece, so I thought it was worth um, us discussing, mm. um, because it is a, a beautiful yet interesting and complex mm. piece. So it's a double portrait after William Hoare of Bath um, and Gabriel Mathias. Um, so left is Dia Diallo, mm -hmm. and right is Cesar Ra Raku. Mm -hmm. And from the Gentleman's Magazine in June 1750. The Gentleman's oh, Magazine. Mm. Okay. okay. All right. That's wow. a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Very nice images. Um, and it does go on to talk about um, one was ca um, one was captured. Um, so Diallo. Sorry, Diallo, who became known as known in Europe as Job Ben Solomon was from a prominent family of African Muslim religious leaders mm -hmm. in the kingdom of Futa. Mm -hmm. um, so modern day Senegal or Gambia. Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, right. okay. Yeah. So he was captured and sold into slavery on a tobacco plantation in Maryland. Mm. But his release was secured by Thomas Blewett, a, a, a lawyer who brought him to England in 1733. Did they say why? No, it doesn't say why. Because, mm. I mean, the thing is, loads of, uh, oh, loads of, like, so. um. So, um, yeah, so what it says here is fashionable society interest in him 
there anticipated that with Omai, the Tahitian who returned from Cook's second voyage in the early 1770s, before returning as a free man to Africa in 1734, and despite a Muslim disinclination to be painted, Diallo was persuaded to sit for Hall um, for a 30 by 25 inch oil portrait in reverse to the image here and chose to be shown in African dress of white robes and turban mm. round a red cap. This also visible here um, included the Koran suspended from his neck. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, which we can see, can't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's quite an in-depth ex explanation. So William Ansa um, Sessa Raku was son of the king of Aka, Akaramu, wow. one of the powerful slave brokers on the Gold Coast. In 1744, Ansa set out on a trading mission to Britain, but was kidnapped by the captain of the ship and himself sold into slavery, which you mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, four years later, he was freed and became the toast of London society when in England in 1749 to 1750. His experiences as a slave made him an early black champion of abolition. His image here is probably derived in reverse from a high quality um, mezzotint of 1749 by John Faber Jr. showing him similarly dressed and wigged, but with a hat under his left arm. This was after a half length oil by Gabriel Matthias, and there is an example in the British Museum. The similarly reversed image of Diallo um, here is probably also derived from an earlier engraving from Hall's oil portrait. For such a print and further details on the painting, then there is a reference. Mm. You know, I, okay, well, I mean, it's obviously quite rare to see uh, two black men featured in the Gentleman's mm, Magazine yeah. um, in the 1700s. I wonder in what context they were featured. But mm. if you're saying that one, the one was the toast of the town, I mean, the thing is, it's not, it's, it's interesting to see how they got freed because it's, it's, it's quite commonplace for lots of like nobility and royalty to get captured and sold into slavery or mm -hmm. traders themselves, like loads of times, like one of the biggest revolts that happened in uh, Jamaica was um, done by um, Taki and he was a, a slave trader himself. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's, I wonder why or how they got, um, how their freedom, if who purchased it and why, mm -hmm. but, and as to how they kind of moved up into the ranks, into these social circles, yeah. circles to be featured into like the gentleman's magazine. Mm. I think uh, the name of the magazine itself tells a lot because, you know, especially the, 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 um, Europe took so much pride in being, you know, the gentlemanly and, you know, civilized and this kind of thing. You know, just going to feature mm. like two black men for no reason, regardless of how they dress. We have yeah. already seen through the last piece mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter how a black person is dressed. That's not going to add any value to mm. why, as to why you should be... Um, documented and portrayed or upheld in any kind of publication. So it's not about their dress, it's about who they are, clearly. Mm. So, you know, I wonder... Um, I wonder what the context mm. is. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of very standalone, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. I wonder if they knew each other as well, being mm -hmm. in the same circles and societies and what it was like in those mm. days when you were with other people that had had the same backgrounds. I mean, obviously, uh, for me, one of the reasons mo is money. Somehow they have got through somehow with having, you know, that a certain amount of status to have their image depicted. And they're in some fine clothing mm -hmm. right there. And, and he's, you know, in his Muslim clothing and mm -hmm. very proud. I mean, yeah, it must be money. Yeah. He's very unapologetically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the was with the Quran and everything. Yeah. Exactly. And you don't see that. I mean, no. I think that's the only one I've seen, yeah. yeah, the only one I've seen, actually. Usually they're dressed like how um, William is dressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or normally you'd see, like, maybe, like, um, paintings of the Moors and stuff, where you'd mm -hmm. see, um, yeah, like, black Muslims um, documented in, in paintings, but 